in today's video i'm going to show you how you can edit your landscape photos i will be using camera Raw in photoshop and because camera Raw is pretty much the same as lightroom you could also use lightroom i will do a little bit of effect in photoshop to create some light effects at the end but if you are used to Lightroom, just use Lightroom because the steps are pretty much the same. So this is the photo we will be working on and this is what it will be. So pretty much everything is done inside Camera Raw filter. This video was actually made for my course. I'm working on a landscape photo editing course, but I feel like the course material will be a lot better. So I thought let's use this for YouTube. So check it out until the end. It's really slow and steady. And that way you can really learn something from it if you enjoy editing landscape photos or if you shoot landscape photos and you don't know how to edit them. So let's not waste any more time and let's start editing. Now, first of all, what you can see here is we have just a background layer. This is the photo and we want to work on separate layers. So that way we don't destruct the original photo. We can always have that as a backup. So let's first of all press Ctrl or Command J to duplicate this layer and then press right mouse and convert to Smart Object. Because with Smart Objects, we can apply settings to a layer that we can later on always change if we want to change our mind. So we're not distracting the original layer, we're working in separate layers. The next step what I would like to do is I would like to go to Filter and select Camera Raw Filter. And this is where most of the stuff will happen. We will work in Camera Raw to do adjustments. We will do adjustments to the sky here, to the mountain, to the trees, to the water here, and also the foreground. So basically we are working in separate parts. We will edit every part separately and that way we have full control of this image. Now, first of all, what I would like to do is I would like to do some basic adjustments to this to increase the exposure here to make this slightly lighter. Let's say like that. And let's also drop the highlights because I feel like they are way too light here. So let's drop those. Let's say minus 35. And I'm gonna increase the shadows here to make them a bit lighter. What we want to do is we want to make sure the background here, the mountain is a bit lighter than the trees here and also the foreground here for the shadows. And that way we are creating some depth. So this will be the first part. Let's even make those shadows lighter like that so we can see the details. Let's also slightly change the colors here. I'm going to add a little bit of this tint and let's move the temperature slightly to the blue side, just like that. What we will do now is we will work on every part separately. And the best way to do this is if we press K on our keyboard, we're gonna create a mask. And with this mask, we can brush and we can work separately. You can see here, I have the feather flow and density at 100. So I have the really soft brush. And with the brackets, I can make the brush bigger or smaller. First of all, what we want to do here is we want to change the lighting. So let me drop the exposure here a little bit and also the highlights. And when I brush now, you can see I'm applying this effect. Let's see here, here you can disable, enable it. Let's brush even more. And I'm also gonna brush it here. So we have the top part and the bottom part slightly darker so we can get our attention to the center of this photo. Now let's see here, before, after, a little bit better. Here you can see the red area is where I brushed. And if you hold down Alt or Option, you can brush away. So let's make sure we don't brush the mountain and also not the trees here, just the top part and the bottom part to make them slightly darker. And now we can eventually even change this. So if you wanna make it even more darker, we can do that now here. And we made this mask with this brush, which makes it really easy to get the right effect we want. So this is for the top part and the bottom part. The next step, what we need to do here is we need to work on the middle part where we see that mist going on and that straight line of the lighting. So let's do this on a separate mask. So if I press K on my keyboard, I will create a separate mask and here I can work on this. So first of all, let's increase the shadows here. You won't see it yet because we didn't brush yet. So let's first increase the shadows and also the blacks. And now if I take this brush again, I can brush here. So I'll make a straight line like that. 
And now I can go back to the settings and change this, as you can see here. So we're creating more of this mist effect in the center. Let's go down to dehaze, which you can find here. And here we can also set this. So here we need to define how much of this haze do we want. We want to apply some haze here. And let's go back to the mask and let's see the before and after we created some haze. I'm going to use the brush while holding on alter option. And let's make the brush a bit smaller because I don't want to apply this to the trees. I just want to have it in the center here like that. Let's go back to the haze, the haze. And here you can see I can set the amount of the haze I want. We have to do this subtle because we don't want to ruin the photo. We still want to make sure it looks like a real haze from the photo. Let's go back to this section, the light again. And here we can also control the light again. So the trick here is to find a nice range where it looks good in your eyes. What I would like to do next is I want to edit this middle part. You can see in the middle we have this mist going on and I want to make that better. So let's do that by pressing K again to create a new mask. And now I'm going to go down here and I'm going to go all the way down to dehaze. Here you can find dehaze. So when we drop this dehaze, we can create some more mist here. So let's make sure we take the brush and make it smaller and run it through this area like that. And now I can eventually control this. How much of this dehaze do I want? Do I want to have a lot of haze? This obviously doesn't look real anymore. So we need to find a nice range between zero and minus. Let's say minus 25 or something would be nice for this one. Let's go back up here and let's look at it before. We had this and now we created this haze. Let's now work a bit on the trees here. So I want to do this again on a new mask. So pressing K again to create a new mask. And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go to light and I will increase the shadows a bit and also the blacks. And now let's just slightly brush here because we have that lighting coming from there. I want to make sure this is a little bit lighter there. So let's see if we can see it before and after you can see here created this lighting there. We don't want to apply too much because the top part there is a bit darker. So make sure it's only the places where we see those highlights of the trees, just like that. And let's compare before, after we created some nice highlights there. Let's do a little bit of a correction to the foreground here and the top part. So again, press K to create a new mask and let's increase the contrast here. And let's drop the exposure. And now I'm going to brush this part here and also that part there, maybe slightly there also. And now I will control this again to find a nice range. Let's say something like this. And this one, just a little touch like that. Let's now work a bit on the sun here, the light effect. So for this, Again, we're going to press K to create a new mask and I'm going to increase the exposure here a bit and then let's go down and give it some warm temperature and a little bit of tint. And let's move down to dehaze and drop the dehaze here a little bit. And now let's brush there and even more a bit there so we can create those really nice lights. Let's go back here to exposure and here we can set the amount we want for this. Let's also try temperature again, maybe slightly warmer like that. And just a little tint. And now let's compare before, after you can see we created those nice lights there. All right, in this photo, we want to make sure we have all the attention on this middle part here and slightly where the mountain is there. So let's press K again to create a new mask and I'm going to go to the whites and I'm going to increase the whites and with the whites we can make areas lighter again. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make the brush smaller and I'm going to brush there like that. Let's go all the way to the end and slightly there. You can see here those nice reflections and let's also do there and like that. And let's now see before after and now we can control this even more so if we increase this we can create those really nice 
light effect like that. And this way we're getting all our focus here on the center of this image. Let's try to find a nice range here. I think something like this. Let's now close this and go to curves. And in curves, I'm going to drop the lights a little bit. I feel like it's slightly too light. And also the darks, gonna make them a bit darker here. Just a little touch. Let's now move on to color grading. And here we can do a little bit of changes in the colors. So let's take the midtones and give it some bluish, just like that. And let's also do the shadows, a little bit of blue there. And let's even move this one slightly to the left and this one also. Let's now press OK and you can see here the before and after how this changed the image. So we made all the changes in Camera Raw, but I also like to do some changes in adjustment layers in Photoshop. So let's go down here and I'm going to select Vibrance here. And let's increase the saturation here and also the Vibrance a bit to get more of these colors. So they are really popping out. The next step, what I would like to do is to add a color balance and I'm going to select highlights here and I slightly want to remove some of those warm tones from the highlights. I feel like they are a bit too much there. Let's also give it a little touch of blue. Let's go down here again and select hue and saturation. And let's just slightly drop the saturation, let's say minus. Then what we could add to this is some light effects coming from there where the sun should be. So let's do that by creating a new layer and I'm going to select a brush. It's almost white to yellowish kind of tint. And let's just select a normal brush. When we go to the settings of the brush, I have the general brush soft round and keep the opacity and flow at 100. And let's just make a dot in the center like that. And let's take the move tool and move that to that side. And with Ctrl T or Command T, I can make it smaller, bigger. And if I hold down Ctrl or Command, I can stretch it out like that to create some sort of a light beam. So I'm holding down Ctrl and you can see here, I can create this awesome light effect. So I wanna create a little bit of a light effect coming from there inside this frame. Let's press Enter and if you feel like it's a bit too yellowish, press Ctrl U and here you can change the lightness. So I think it should be more kind of whitish like that. And you can duplicate this by, by pressing Ctrl J and just moving it next to it. So you have even more light beams. And this one, you could change the shape a bit. So they are not the same, just like that. Maybe rotate it slightly. And now you can see we created those nice light effects coming from the sun there. And we can play with the opacity here to kind of make sure it blends well in this photo. So just drop the opacity there a little bit less so it still looks like a real sun and not like photoshopped. So that's pretty much it. Thanks for watching this video. If you want to learn more about Photoshop, make sure to check out one of these videos. I have a lot of videos on how to edit wildlife photos. Until then, catch you on the next one.